Oh, um, Lucy K special. <laughs> Absolute fire flame. Um, so I watched Lucy K special yesterday. Uh, it's called Sincerely Louis C.K. It's available now on his um, website. Check it out. It's like $8, which is like, what, I think like £6. Um, you can pay for it directly via his website. He's did this previously before with other specials. He kind of releases them directly on his website. Easy to easy to download. You just play them on most players. And I mean, I don't need to give you the backstory on Louis C.K. You know, he went through a little bit of a Me Too moment when Me Too was still in full swing. What's happened to Me Too now, right? People have kind of gone a bit quiet about that. Especially nowadays, you know, people have more testing things to worry about than the power dynamics that you know mostly caucasian held companies in the middle of a hand or somewhere and no one cares but anyway lucy k special is really good um it's really good because it's honest of course it's what you expect it's incredibly dark um it takes you on a complete journey and he did a really good way he did a really good way of kind of addressing everything without overly addressing it he didn't turn it into a ted talk where he just lays bears the pains of being a man in hollywood and how women have it easy i thought he was gonna go down that route i really did um but he didn't he wasn't embittered he kind of understood he kind of i kind of got the feeling he understood he was just collateral damage like he wasn't necessarily about him he just happened to represent the patriarchy he was represented he was representative um, he was a sacrificial lamb in that respect, right? He had to go down because that story just came out, and because the story was so egregious, it sounded it it sounded worse than what it actually was. Um, people got their panties in a twist and they immediately cancelled him. But then, if you read between the lines or you dig a bit deeper, especially listen to some comedian podcasts, you hear that he was quite instrumental in propping up the careers of several women on the scene who didn't necessarily get any chances with any other with any other executive or producer especially female producers right because there's a lot of them out there but they don't necessarily go out of their way to hire some of these writers that he was kind of having on board or that he was having tour with him or that he was having or that he was mentoring whether it was for his own you know um kinks whatever that's that that's by the by but i mean in terms of just helping people out he was a good guy to the friends that he liked right the people that he liked or people that were in his circle they got good looks so when that when he's when his life was you know pulled from underneath his feet and the netflix special was cancelled and his movie was i think i think they postponed it for a while then it went straight to dvd um he had a big movie coming out that was like shot in black and white i seem to remember uh then everyone of course they worked with was out of a job too and i think he mentioned something along the lines of i think he said something like 30 million dollars or something he lost during that whole debacle he moved to france hooked up with a with a french uh comedian out there who he mentions in the special as well and just you know kind of felt as if like he was going to stop doing comedy and just kind of live a regular regular life then obviously some videos came not videos but some blog entries from uh, writers who were going around following him all around the world uh, when he popped up in comedy clubs and you know saying how threatened they felt about him being on stage and all that sort of theatrics and then i think a joke got out um, that he was testing or that he was kind of running through in a club about things school shootings it might have been during one of the school shootings in america and then that really kind of spiked that really kind of got everyone talking again about number one it got talking it got people speaking again about the merits of louis ck right the fact that he's always been that guy he's always been this dark guy even before what happened happened to him that he was you know he sounded like he was working at a joke he wasn't necessarily like he wasn't a complete joke he didn't uh smooth the edges off of it or anything and the reaction to it was quite silly and nonsensical and i think that might gave him a bit of encouragement that the people within the community within the scene were kind of backing him and championing him and then he kind of went quiet and then we announced a tour in all these random countries around the world and he sold most of them out and he just felt as if like wow this dude is impenetrable right he's obviously one of the greats i think he's definitely top five in terms of like living comedians at the moment but he definitely showed a bit of appeal that he had in terms of the place he was able to book um, all around the world that he definitely had a bit of a pull still regardless of the scandal i think people could see through the scandal and say you know what he's always you know because if you watch some of his old specials you know he's always been a bit of a creep he's always been a bit of a pervert um so hearing a story about him doing whatever in front of these comedians didn't really seem like that big of a deal um and again i've been waiting for him to come back on the scene for a while this he's a kind of this is the kind of comedy i like um, it's the kind of perspectives I like. Um, it's very introspective. It's very dark. Again, very honest. Um, I won't spoil any of the jokes for you because, of course, you know that's not the thing that you do. But I really recommend you check it out. It's one of my favorites of recent years, and it's probably easily up there with Dave Chappelle's. Like easily up there, easily, easily. Definitely better than Chris Rock's of late, and maybe a few others. But 
Lucicay definitely put himself back on the market again. And I think he's do it before. He was he was very prolific in terms of always doing a special a year. Um, maybe it's because they travel. Because I think some comedians say you should do them every eighteen months. Sometimes it'll be longer because obviously you need to live a little bit. You need to gain some kind of you know experience. You need to travel, be on a road. Um, hear some stories, um, make some stories, and then you start to kind of fine tune your act. But he tends to really work at a prolific pace. That might be due to the fact that he's, you know, at the time he was a uh, one of the Hollywood elites, so he probably was writing a ton for other people, meeting loads of people, interacting, flying all around the world. So he had a ton of material to actually kind of lay bare. But maybe now if things are slowed down. He might take a bit. He fought the pedal a little bit, but I don't think there's any point. No, he's got. This is probably three years off of material or condensed into one special he's probably got loads of stuff he's probably doing now at the moment that's fresh and new he probably should, will be ready to put another special maybe by the end of the year if he wanted to so i can't wait to see what he does next um i like that he would provide a little press release about it saying that people will probably need a little bit of a laugh now in these dark times and this is a great time to drop the special and for me it definitely was it took me away from everything that's going on i turned off the news i sat down grabbed a cup of tea and watch Lucy K. So see Lucy K. Available now on his website, which is lucyk.com. Check it out again. I'll put it in the links below for you to see. But definitely one of my favorite um, specials of recent years, and definitely puts him up there as one of the top act comedians on the scene.